a cup doing that. Right, I'm running a uh, Velocidrone in the background because it's every time I turn it on, it has to download seven thousand billion gigs. Um, if it starts affecting me, let me know, and I'm going to just turn it off. Why, why are you downloading it anyway? It says Velocidrone patch system, and it's at nineteen percent, and it's ready in eight hours, and I've got um two hundred gig download, and it says it's still ready in eight hours, so. It seemed like the right way to start the podcast. Thank goodness for the live logo in the corner. Yeah. Hello, and you're listening to... <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I didn't even it, see it that. It missed the best part. It missed the best part. How it's about it's yeah, I know. Amazing. Like FPV buttholing. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> right, tonight we are joined by Andy RC. Good evening, everyone. Greg from Menace RC. Hello, everyone. Curry Kitten. Hello. And everyone's favourite first person view in my butthole, Tony. I think you should elaborate on that. Why are we talking about FPV through buttholes and what's the reception like? And has, has Greg already developed a new antenna that can help us out there? Yeah, <laughs> Probably. It's called the probe. I thought it was called. I thought it was called the invader myself. <laughs> um, and I am bright until I fly. Uh, one of our f- favourite viewers has lost someone close to them, and we would just like to say that we give our thoughts to her, and uh, also. Yep. Someone very special is watching tonight for Tony. Hello. Don't be shy. <laughs> Say hello in the chat. Oh, I forgot we've got a chat. Yeah, uh, shout out to... Um, I'm going to say her name, Tornado Girl. We're thinking about you. Are you going out with Tornado Girl now? <laughs> no, but I'm thinking about her because she lost someone dear to her, so... What about the other girl? Are you thinking about her as well? Just in Constantly. A way. Okay. <laughs> Constantly, Jack. Okay. Uh, oh, so, look, there is a chat. So anyway, tonight uh, we're here with Menace RC. How are you doing? Very well, thank you very much. Oh, you're a little bit muffled. You yeah. Like a moment ago. Oh, does it get clearer as I come in closer? No. <laughs> No. Are you recording with a potato? <laughs> we yeah. had to teach Tony about this. Um, it's, it's, a, it's on a MacBook. It's a MacBook microphone. Hmm. Is it still muffled? It's horrendous. Anyone listening to this as a podcast, I do apologise. Greg makes fantastic antennas, but is absolutely useless when it comes to microphones. If you can bear with me, I'll go and get a microphone. Please do. I think the uh, the title of this video is spelled spelled. I can't even spelled. say it. God, can't even say it. Yeah, that's... <laughs> is it spelled or spelt? Spelled. <laughs> I, what's I'm what's wrong with the spelling? I thought Pico was with a C, not a K. Am I wrong? Maybe my maybe my video. I googled is wrong. it though. It, it is with a C, isn't it? The one he's actually done is with a C. But that says Peco. Oh, God, why didn't anyone tell me? Oh, I only just... I didn't that. want to tell you, Jack, because I find it amusing. It should no be renamed to Butthole FPV anyway. <laughs> it probably oh, will be I'm by the end of the account. show. I'm... I think I think Greg's got a bad microphone on purpose here because it's, you know, it's titled with uh, his name. And all we've so far, we've talked about buttholes. <laughs> what are you drinking, act- Andy? Frank's not here. Tesco's own emerge energy drink to keep to try and give me some energy because I'm uh, low uh, on I, energy. Uh, I at night, you nutter. Yeah, I know, but I I need to stay awake. Are you, when's the video? Well, if I'm trying to do stuff in order, so if you if you have a look, Jack, the first thing that Jack did when he came up here was handed me the tricopter. So that video has just come out. Yes, and then uh, I'm I'm gonna work on it because I think actually, but because the thing is as well, we've had unusually amazing weather here, and I think like 
I'm I'm grateful for it in a way, but on the other hand, it's meant that stuff stuff that's like just for fun, like the the the, the LDO trip, is like it just keeps getting pushed back as the weather's amazing and I, and I do something else. But apparently, we're going to have like the entire next week of rain, so um, that'll be uh, when I can do it, I guess. Well, I hope it rains up your yard and not mine, just no. so you can get on the video. I think uh, I think we're we're all in for some rain, and I hope that it's not going to continue on to Western Park because everybody's still going Western Park. Or I can't make it. You're yeah. not going, Tony. Unfortunately, no. not. I want to, but I've got. Uh, I can't find. Well, my parents are away, so I've got no one to look after the dogs for two days. So me not coming. What about everyone else? Jack, Greg, Wayne. Yeah. I am hopefully going with Frank if oh, cool. I've completed this thing. How do you sound? How do I sound now? Not amazing. <laughs> the same. About the same. What happened? You spoke to me earlier and you sounded fine. I just put in one of these. Oh, it's things. definitely not coming through there. I wonder if it's the settings in Hangouts. You yeah. Know, and you can change the source. Wiggle your... Yeah. Your mouse pads, and then above you should be like a hang up phone, a cog, an antenna symbol. You click on the cog, the and settings. Then that's your settings. As you can see, this is a probe podcast. It's our <laughs> guest, he doesn't do this professionally. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, the others do it, not, not like that. <laughs> do it. What do we do, Jack? Yeah, within reason, the experts. Um, I, I don't know Western part wise, I just noticed it was. The next weekend, isn't it? So, I, I hopefully, I can get away for the Saturday. And yeah, it's actually spend Father's... eight hours on the road to spend a couple of hours there or something. It's Father's Day weekend, actually. So I, know. I don't know whether they they've... definitely can't go on a Sunday. I I don't know whether they've done that on purpose because like that's like Father's Day out because it is a proper dad's. Is Andy RC frozen? Yes. So oh, we're good. having we're having a great time, Frank. Don't <laughs> worry, go away. I've got it all sorted. <laughs> well, we need Frank. Andy, I see is frozen. He's frozen in a brilliant position, though, hasn't he? Can't eat, Frank. <laughs> oh, ducky! Someone take a screenshot of that, Greg. We can't hear a word, anything coming out of your mouth. Should we just talk amongst ourselves about the Pico patch? Now he's muted himself. No. Go into Windows settings. Use a headset. Use an Apple headset. Yeah, if you if you got a MacBook, if you just if you got an iPhone, you just plug in the headphones. That'll yeah, work. That'll work. Are you an iPhone user? Nod. He yeah. must be. He's got a MacBook. <laughs> they hate Android phones. Use sign language. Great. Is Tony a homosexual? With you, Jack wishes I was. Jack wishes so, I was. What's so good him. about this antenna? <laughs> <laughs> so the reason that uh... ah, hello, hello, yeah, Is there clear you go. Oh, clear it's up. Rubbish. It's still rubbish. Do I leave and rejoin via the phone? No, that's fine. Just we we'll just carry on. Have like you got this, an Android phone? No. Have you got the headphones that came with your Apple device? Somewhere. All right, go find them. <laughs> it could be hours. <laughs> I'll be back again. You carry on talking amongst yourselves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it on hold. Someone's sorry on sorry about that, guys. My computer did a blue screen of death. It always does that when we do this podcast. Somehow it's like it's trying to tell me something. Yeah. All right, you froze right. in a brilliant position, Andy. You were doing this. Yeah, I did it. Actually, was like that for about thirty seconds because I wasn't sure whether it was still like it did a blue, it did the Windows blue screen of death, but like it said, "Oh, your computer's gathering information." I'm like, "What if it's actually transmitting?" So I thought, I'll sit like that for thirty seconds. Uh, uh, that's funny. Anyways, any, we... any objections to me? Because the podcast has gone so to shit. Any, any objections to me? Um, like phoning up and ordering a pizza because like <laughs> i did i did not 
get to finish cooking. My cooker exploded. As long as so you bad. read out your your credit card details on la- on the, the stream, then yes. I don't know about that. <laughs> Something inside me is telling me that's wrong. Are you going to order oh, a God. pizza just to offend Tony as well? Where's Frank when you need him? Oh, there we go. Hello. Can I order a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> this is like the worst <laughs> podcast ever. <laughs> Just think of all the new uh, pizza so, interest we're going to get. What about all the new subscribers? The only, the, only like, reason, the, the only reason I answered this is because at the moment I'm on like the drone podcast and it is going to hell. So I thought I might as well answer and say, hey, how you doing? Because uh, I really wish the, the ground would open up and eat me right about now. So do I. Yeah, mate. All the pizza places I'm, are available. I have phoned you a lot of times. <laughs> What would you recommend, Domino's or Pizza Hut? I don't Hut. like Domino's anymore. Hut. You can get a vegan. You can get a vegan pizza at All right, Pizza cool. Hut. You can, can you hear it? me now. Yes. 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 That's it's beautiful. working. Oh. Is it nice and clear? It's yeah. very clear. perfect. Cool. Right. Hello. Hi, Greg from NSRC. How are Hello. you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm glad you can hear me now. You sound great. Cool. Awesome. Right. What should we talk about? Well, the new Pico patch, I think. Who, uh, um, that's the one. Yes, cool. Is the left end the same colour? Yeah, they're both purple, the Pico patch. Okay. So I'll give you a quick overview of the patch itself. Um, designed it. It's much smaller than our current Invader. Um, and also it been able to increase the efficiency of the patch itself, which means that we've been able to bring the, um, the gain of it up. So ultimately, you've got a much smaller patch and you can fly a bit further with it. So that's the Pico in a nutshell. Uh, it's what, very... What's the sort of beam width? Is that thinner or the same? Or... So what, what you've got here is... Um, where you've increased the overall gain, it's the out front gain of the patch itself. It means that the beam width is um, reduced. So it's a, it's a um, 61 degrees on the, the patch itself. Um, but what I've been able to do is plot the polar plot of the patch against the invader patch and also the pagoda as well onto uh, a different style of chart because um, all, all the all the antennas and everything you see on the market, they, they're all in DB, and it's very hard um, for the average user to relate the DB to the actual what it's going to do for you. So um, I've been able to work it out and plot it in meters. So based on a 25 milliwatt VTX, um, of you course, can, yeah, of course, you can. Um, see the range and the beam width and everything that you can fly with it. What's interesting is that down um, at the close quarters, the, the beam width is very similar to, uh, to the Invader. And then you can see there's a, there's a massive lobe out the front. We've got that plot up on the Menace website. So if anyone wants to have a look, they can just hop on there and um, go onto the Pico page and you will see what I'm talking about. Or you could put the link in the chat. I still think, Jack, that the title is spelled wrong. <laughs> spelt, spelt. I think it's P I C O, not P E C O. Welcome to the dyslexic podcast. It, it is. Okay. It. Yeah, <laughs> just people just say, no, you've done it wrong. And then just say, put a C in it and don't actually tell me where or what or. I Change the K for a C. Yeah, but it's it's. P I C O, isn't it? Not P E. Not says Peco. Oh, you, did a, you did an E as well. Well, you got two out of four letters, right? That's <laughs> well done, Jack. <laughs> I hate you all. To be fair, that like, I don't even know why I'm defending this great Yeti, but to be fair, he he's um he his cooker did just blow up in his face, so he was probably a bit dishevelled. Yeah. Also, well, the, all right, Jack. The only reason yeah. I know as well is because. No, you, I'm, I've I'm, got one. I'm dyslexic, and when I was, I I always get the title of my videos wrong. And when I was looking at Pico, I was I couldn't like how how do you spell that? Like so, I, I had to to look. So, um, Greg, it went on sale. Was it yesterday? 
uh, on Menace site? Um, we we started um, shipping them yes, yesterday, and uh, they went on pre-orders on Friday last week. So anyone who's put a pre-order in um, would have, would have shipped yesterday, and likelihood, if you're in the UK, you would have received it today. So um, when when I did my review, I got like quite a few comments that were like, "Damn it, I've just bought the Invader." <laughs> <laughs> And so, so my question is, is this to replace the Invader or are you still going to run that because of the slightly wider field of view on the Invader? Um, right. So how I see it is that the Invader, very good patch and it works extremely well if you're racing in all those sort of applications. Um, but if you want to do a bit freestyle, you want to fly a little bit further, um, then that's what the Pico is for. Um, now, I'm a strong believer that you don't just buy one antenna and it's going to be great for all applications or all places you want to fly and use it. So it's always good to have a few um, receiving antennas in your, in your toolbox, as it were, so that if you're at a location, you can pick the right one for you. You know, the Invader, up close quarters, wider beam width, you're going to fly a much um, wider area. But then if you want to fly a lot further, then you can um, swap that out, put the Pico on and fly further. Um, that's kind of, um, you know, where, where it fits into the range. So I don't see it as replacing the Invader, but just complementing the Menace range of receiving patches. Yeah, that's sort of what that's the, that's sort of what I said to the comments as well because the the invader is probably better for close up stuff because the field of view also tails off as you get further away, doesn't it as well? So yes. um, that that's kind of how I've been using it as well. If you're going a little bit further distance, then the Pico's good. Uh, but for where I fly as well, like the Pico's doing its job close in as well for me. So. Um, it's it's a win-win. Oh, well, it's good. Yeah, it's good for uh, bush penetration. Am I right? <laughs> Tony knows all about that. <laughs> guys. We're not experts on that. Well, it's... <laughs> You've been doing a lot of uh, bush penetration lately. <laughs> it's, it's definitely going to help if you're flying through scraggle bushes and yeah. such. Because you, you, you've got a higher gain antenna on your goggles, so you are going to receive more of the uh, transmitted signal. I've just, uh, I've just looked at that chart, Greg, and I think that's a fantastic idea. I've, see, I've obviously seen the sort of chart before, which generally says it's good out the front, not so good out the back. But even if it's an estimate, put in the sort of range that it's like you might get is, is far better than, um, yeah, as you say, sort of DB or just that sort of a strange, you know, weird shape that you generally see that's a good idea yeah. i hope people adopt that yeah it was just trying to put it into into a um something that everyone can relate to because not everyone talks in dbs or you know in electrical electronic terms so i think hopefully that it'd be quite quite a useful way of um explaining how the antennas work and what they're capable of yeah because db can be quite I found it tricky because it's a, a logarithm. It's a mathematic thing, isn't it? It's sort of it's not linear. So, um, like I think the general rule is: is it something like six dB is double the range? But then, if you go up again, it's sort of it, it's it's not like six dB every time. It sort of it tails off, and that's where I struggle with like talking with dB and stuff. Yeah, it it can get um, it can get very confusing um so you know with the with the logarithmic scales and such so you know i think just trying to put something pictorial in in meters it really does remove that confusion and it gives you something that is quite tangible to what you're trying to do with your drone yeah Possibly, no. unless you're american in which case you think a meter might be something like 10 miles and you're a bit confused <laughs> by the whole idea <laughs> there's always oh. that Trust Curry Kitten to just... So, uh, <laughs> Most well, of it's normally your job. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it's different to the Invader patch, isn't it? So, the Invader patch is flat, and the Pico's got, like, a bit sticking out. Can What's what's that? What is that on there, and what does it do, and why does it do it? 
Um, well, so basically, I'm, I'm asking the... these questions, Jack, for people who don't know. So stop slapping your head. I love the way you put it, though. He lost me in the technicality there. Yeah, it's too too much for me. The sticky out bits. I'm yeah. trying to I'm trying to break break it down for the viewers who are probably me anyway. You mean the active element and the passive reflector? Ooh. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, it's just that I thought he might have learned something after all these years of like, you know, he, he attended the you know the the episode with Can we mute him? Just <laughs> he, let Greg he was there with me with the episode with like you know Alex there like teaching us and it did not go in at all, not one bit. Jack, have you heard, like, when people do interviews, they try to break it down for people who are listening, who don't know how to say stuff. Yeah, I know. So, I thought I'm you might know. Well, now. I do know, but I'm trying to make it easier for other people <laughs> who are listening. And now all they can hear is us arguing, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes what people tune in for. <laughs> Sorry, Greg, carry on. I know, but not tonight. <laughs> right. Sorry, okay, Greg. So um, yeah, basically, it's a two two layer PCB construction. Um, now, with the Invader, it was a one it was a it was a one PCB with two uh, copper layers on it. So you had your ground plane on the back of the PCB, and on the front you had your active plane. In between those two uh, copper elements, you had the PCB material, which was the FR four. Um, now, five works... glass for Tony. <laughs> that works perfectly well. Um, but what I've done with the um, Pico is to try and remove as much of the FR4 material between the active and the passive um, copper planes. Because um, then air, air is perfect for radio waves, but FR4 isn't so good. So um, by changing the way it's constructed and then introducing this air gap in much thinner materials it means we've moved as much as the fr4 as possible and therefore increase the efficiency of the um of the patch so that's how um been able to get the gain up much higher on the pico compared to the invader um as a result of that because the efficiency's gone up i thought well let's see how far i can push it and optimize how how much i can shrink the size of the ground plane, so and it's ended up at the size we sort of see here. Um, where's that? Yeah, see so for anyone that's smaller. looking. Totally, that's that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and then side on. I uh, I can't really see with a. Yeah, no, yeah. A lot but you get the idea. So I am fascinated, Greg. I know nothing about the antenna technology, but in developing this, do you just is, is it like, well, I, I've done this and I know if I change the shape of this, it's going to do that. And then you put it on a big analyzer and check what happens. And is it trial and error from there? Or is there some is there some sort of logic about shapes and sizes of what you can do and what you think you're going to get from them? Right. There's, um, so with patch antennas, a lot of the a lot of the work is done. Um, if you go and search for patch antenna design online, you'll see um, numerous websites with calculations and ways to calculate um, the size of the patch. There's even online calculators, but they're all based on just a standard square um, backplane or uh, a circular backplane. Um, the, the active elements can be various different shapes, um, but a majority of these um, patch designs are done via a square or truncated corner or something like that. Um, now, what I've done with these is that I played around with, and literally played around with different shapes of um, ground planes, etc., and then make one, test it, and then sort of see where it's going, um, think, you know, if you need to improve it, change the shape again, compare it to the last one, and you're trying to build your own profile of where you're going with it. So it is it is quite a lengthy process, and you do make quite a lot of prototypes before you end up with something that is um, that you're happy with, if that makes sense. 
yeah so how many did you go through and, and did you end up with any weird and wacky shapes that you just like this is this is weird I'm not putting that out oh i mean at least at least a dozen iterations of the design um now when i when i started off um i've got like a, a small cnc machine so i get some uh copper clad board and i can cut this on the cnc machine so the first few iterations are just really hobby handmade on the machine and soldered together and everything like that but then what happens then is once you've um got something going in that sense and then you want to move forward to something which is more of a product that's when you get the the, the design files over to a pcb house and they they will make the um the pcbs but then ultimately what you find is every single pcb house or pcb source has um fr4 material which has def different relative permeability so you when you get it back it is not what you expected so you have to go through that cycle again of tweaking and adjusting until you get to somewhere that you're absolutely happy with and it's going to perform the way you want it to um so um <clears throat> we've got a lot of things that are changing like in terms of, so i think it's fair to say that a lot of people are gonna be using these patch antennas with diversity because of the you know the, the field of view etc and we're, we're seeing a lot of um uh, these diversity modules changing recently like the clear view system and now rapid fire and ha have any tests been done with with those to see if um you know the antennas will benefit that system i've, I've got something here um, this is a, a very let's drone out product the dock king <laughs> <laughs> Um, don't Google docking, just don't. Um, That's I, right, kids. I got, I got this do thing. I, do I edit that out in the edit, guys? Can we have like no, a little vote? Why leave why, it? In. Why would you edit the Doc King? I said, what's wrong? Oh, with Doc King, two Ks. I didn't even know what it was. Anyways, I, I googled it because everyone was like, "Oh man, that name." Um, can I dock with you, Andy? Uh, okay. You can. You can, actually. Yeah, uh, we should not go into that. <laughs> One of you will have to be the dock queen. You both have to be... Uh, what's the What's the word? Um, no, I, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Your jokes from the list that you gave me were far not offensive. Enough. I had to change them a lot, yes. I was like, I can't, I can't say this, yeah. And uh, basically, any time you heard me make a joke about myself, originally it was wrote a riot, and then I thought that's not fair. I might as well change it to to me. So, anyways, but yeah. So, what do you, what do you make about these diversity modules? And like, they they do like blending of the two, aren't they? So that you don't get like so much complete break up and, and stuff. Yeah, the um, the clear view style modules they they obviously work differently to diversity. So yeah. Uh, so, you know, diversity switches from one antenna to the other, whereas a clear view, um, like you just said, it, it will take what it feels is the best from each antenna and merge the two together. I'm not sure exactly how it does it, but um, yeah, tested um, the Pico on, on a clear view, uh, two, two Picos, and it works very well. Um, it's... Um, there's, I know there's the the rapid fire as well coming out yeah. quite soon if it's I not out already. So I think that's going to be one to grab and um, do some testing with with the Pico to see, see um, how it performs on that as well. So Greg saying buy more Pico antennas. <laughs> two. <laughs> two. Yeah. And I take it when you buy two Pico antennas, you'll be angling them at different directions. And and do you advise doing that on like say um your goggles as well o over using say a omni in conjunction with the pico um it, it it depends entirely to the user and what they're trying to do um I, I would say for most applications an omni antenna and a directional antenna like the pico would um fit most people's applications in what they're trying to do where they're trying to fly um, I have seen some guys using two Picos, um, 
again, if you're going to put two on, it depends what what you're trying to achieve with it. If you're trying to achieve quite a wide flying area at distance, then yeah, mount the two on your goggles and move the angle so they're pointing sort of you know out each way apart. So maybe at sort of 35 to 45 degrees apart or or further, depending on you know how far you're going to fly and so on. Um, but yeah, I, I would say most applications an Omni, an Omni and a Pico patch would be great. But um, yeah, we'll do some we'll do some more testing and we'll, we'll get one of those rapid fires and we'll test with that as well and see see what the best solution yeah. is. I thought yeah. about getting one of those, but don't they require it? Like I, I haven't got the HDOs, I've got the um, HD threes, and don't they require you to run a, a wire across? I think the, the ri power yeah, I think the, the ribbon can't take the five volts. Well, then, like Josh did a test and he modified it, and it made no difference or something. It was uh, I I I need to look up what's going on because that's why I haven't. Uh, that that's why. I've, Dock kinged uh, because um, I'm yeah I'm not sure about the the power with the the rapid fire I need to I need to look it up. Sandra, Sandra put a post on Facebook about um, modifying one of the bits in Fat Sharks, taking off some little resistor or something, which would then put out the right amount of. <clears throat> the thing is, though, uh, you know, I, I would that that surely would invalidate the warranty, which I use all the time because fat chance <laughs> you keep breaking yours. Well, well, I use them a lot. I mean, it's, yes, it's lucky you work for them, else you'd be in trouble. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I worked for them. I'd have a nice shiny pair of HDOs, and everyone seems to have gone and bought them, but uh, I haven't got a pair. I thought you were supposed to re receive a check in the post room. I don't get anything. Well, I don't get anything from Fat Shark. I wish I did. I did. Although I hear I've got the attitudes, and I hear the attitudes have got the the right c can power up the rapid fire. So maybe maybe I can buy because the Jack's, rapid. Sorry, go on. I was just gonna say Jack's got attitude. Can I do a um? <laughs> can I do a readout of the people in the chat, please? Please yeah. do. I think we should. Uh, Richard Harbord's in the chat. MC Creations in the chat. Owen's in the chat. Bill MRC's in the chat. Falling with Star, what's up, mate? Ash is in the chat. He's got a ch uh, question that he's going to type out again because I can't find it. Enoch's in the chat. Who else is in the green patches? Uh, Zero, as ever. What's up, Zero? Um, who else have we got in there? Mikey. Mikey Dread is in the chat. HBI's in the chat as well. What's up, HBI guy? He's uh, selling all the menace patches up where he works. There's Harry Haggis, Drone Racer 101. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning well, in. Yeah. You, I bet I have typed in the chat more times than Tony. No, actually, maybe not. <laughs> I was just going to encourage people to try it just with one patch because there's nothing like the exciting time of having one directional antenna and having to manually track with your head to find out where your yeah. model is. That's, that's, that gets you really in interesting positions, especially if you're sat in a chair like this. But uh, yeah, it's all good. That, before the days of diversity was more interesting. It's funny you say <laughs> that. I, be I believe this uh, this Doc King thing, I keep, I keep bringing it up. I, <laughs> keep that word, I just you? like saying doc docking, yeah. Um, I think it's got like a model finder on it, you know, so, so if your model comes down, uh, it's got like a, a thing on it, so it'd be interesting to check that out. Another thing that I've um, been told about, because this is Furious FPV. Tony, there's two Tonys in the chat, by the way, and I'm scared. Sorry. Why um, is there two Tonys? I don't know. It's a picture of a cat. So um, the, uh, the Furious FPV have got a, you know how people are um, Sticking on and off buttons on their fat shots for some reason. You know, have you seen people do that because they they want a button to turn their fat shots on? Mm. Um, furious, yeah. furious. What battery connector is for? Well, yes, yeah, but but there are, are a huge amount of people, and you can look them up, who uh, are are like cutting holes in their fat shots to put a button on, so that you can leave your battery in, like and press the button to turn them off, which I think is a bad idea because it means you can leave your goggles turned on, you know, and, you know, so I don't, I don't get the point, but people want it. 
So Furious FPV have come out with a Fat Shark uh, battery that's got a button on it. So you don't have to do the button mod. But I don't know how I don't know how this is going to work. If you leave your battery plugged in, uh, and it somehow is recognizing that there's no activity on your goggles, it's going to automatically shut your goggles off. So um, that should be an interesting product, and hopefully I'll get one of those to check out as well. Well, oh, hang, what? Huh? What? It's a Fat Shark battery. Yeah. With, with a button on it, so you can turn your goggles on and off. Leave yeah, it, no, leave that, it that bit I get, but if it doesn't detect activity it's gonna turn off yeah i don't know how it's gonna do that but that's what they've told me well after, what, so you're flying the... if you fly very very still and don't move your head it could turn off while you're flying no no they're saying when there's no activity with the goggles and i don't yeah, well that's what i'm saying I jack wouldn't... jack when he flies he's like duh, duh, like that and there'd be no activity and then you're like <laughs> <laughs> or are we saying that goggles draw more power when there's like a picture on the screen, but if there's just static? Possibly. I don't know. I really, I, I, I don't know. Well, well you need to, you need to get this. this. You're going to review this, Andy. Yeah, yeah. docking thing it. going, Andy. Mm-hmm. And why have you put clothes back on? Everyone was uh, wanting you in the vest. Yeah, we've like... got 60 viewers who want that top right off. I just, well, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not a piece of meat. You and know? that's literally because <laughs> Tony typed in the chat at the start, Andy RC's got his tits out for the lads. No, I wrote that. <laughs> Did you write that? Yeah. Everything gets written in the chat is oh, now attributed well, to Tony, I'm afraid. I'm so, pleased yeah. that that, I'm so pleased that that was announced, and I'm sorry to disappoint, but, um, you know... I have, I have my. I'm not a piece of meat. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I am. If anybody is interested in listening, I am. <laughs> okay, there's a question. There's a question in the chat for Greg. What does Pico mean, or Pico, Pico as Jack would call it? Uh, and why did Graham, Greg name it that? Pico. Um, Okay. Uh, it, is it like Latin for penetration or something? <laughs> no, no. Something very small or something. Correct. Yes. When you um, oh. look at capacitors, um, you got um, milli, micro, pico, nano, pico. It's just um, as you get smaller in a value, it's just the terminology. So I thought, yeah, we've seen micro in mini products. So let's go for pico. So Pico patch, as in smaller. So it's mm. physically smaller. So Nano was the next one then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, m- maybe. <laughs> I have I have a question. Um, so is is a um, is a cloverleaf antenna not as good as the pagoda? That's my question because I I tried the pagoda and I don't mm. I don't know if it's because. I my flying sight's quite small. I I find that I'm flying above myself quite a lot, and I find um, with the pagoda when I go over the top of myself, I lose signal, and with the cloverleaf, I don't get that. Um, so that's why I don't use the the pagodas. I, I use the the cloverleaf. Yeah. But but when I see everyone's setup, they're using a pagoda. So what is it that's better about? The pagoda than the cloverleaf is it higher gain or something? What what's the the, the benefit? The um so in your situation where you're flying, you know earlier on we were talking about having the right antenna for the right job. Yeah, you're flying over the top of you, so you find that the clover works for you, which is which is absolutely right because the way the pagoda is done, it's um everyone knows it's it's PCBs and um, mm. it sets up a the, the um, radiation pattern um, by phasing on these two PCBs but what that means is at the top and at the bottom of the pagoda um, you've got these sort of nulls so you don't get as much signal at the top and bottom so when you've tried that pagoda and you've flown right over your head you're directly underneath it and mm-hmm. you've experienced the signal dropping out but with the clover leaf it's a bit more uniform around the clover, so you haven't experienced the um, the, the the dropout. Um, what was the second part of your question? Um, I think that was it. I think that, that was, was it, it really. I, yeah. I mean, I think the question the question was which is better, but um, so, but so so is the pagoda? Does it have? Um, oh, that was it. Does it have a higher gain than a cloverleaf? Or, or the, the, I I I guess they're sort of 
very low in game the omnis because yeah they're, they're I mean, a lot of omnis hover around the one db mark um so i think the pagoda might be 1.2 or 1.3 or something like that um the the main difference between the clover leaf and the pagoda is what they call the actual ratio um so that is the measurement of the right hand signal compared to the left hand signal and how it rejects um the you know the opposite so if you've got yeah. a right hand one clover um it might pick up more left hand signal than a pagoda because the pagoda re would reject more of the left hand signal if that makes sense yeah oh okay yeah no that's so cool should yeah. racers be like you know we use race band and we can sort of fly eight people at a time uh -huh. should we start introducing left right left right left right would that make a difference um yeah. <laughs> do you know it, it, it's going to depend on the location that you're in now if if you say for if, say say we're flying indoors for example mm -hmm. and um we're all going left right left right left right every time a signal hits a wall indoors it's going to bounce back as the opposite so that right hand signal is going to change to a left right so in in an indoor environment if you're going left right left right left right i think you would probably see a bit it'd be worse than you all being on the same right as it but, were but greg if we're indoors flying yeah. our tiny roots with linear antennas yes. we're going to be using the bandicoot patch yeah you know you are <laughs> it's almost like I don't jack, understand. it's almost like jack saying that question like he knows the answer that's amazing i, I don't it. know anything anymore <laughs> am, am i being pedantic if because it, it was slightly getting to me every time you guys said clover i'm thinking did they actually mean clover or they did they mean skew planar because surely the the free lobe clover is kind of out of business now isn't it and everyone's got a four leaf skew planar antenna was uh, that, no, well, that... I think I don't know. I just call them the cloverleaf because, like, they're sim yeah. just the shape of them. They're, they're so similar yeah. that I think for me, it, it, I thought it was Alex, Alex Greve, and some other guys came up with the idea of the clover. Yeah, yeah. And and the skew plane has been around since the fifties as this massive thing developed on low frequencies, which was adapted. Mm. So every time people say cloverleaf, I'm like, why are you using the old stuff? I think and, and just just anecdotally where, where I fly, I'm not seeing a difference between using uh, a skew and uh, a uh, a thingy. I forgot what the name is Pagoda. now. The other one. Thank you. Pagoda. Yeah. yeah they, they all seem the same, but I'm not flying over my head like Andy does. No. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just when I fly. Well, I get it's also when you when you when you fly higher up. Uh, I get. I guess you are sort of more over over yourself when you fly yeah. higher up as well. When when you use the dock king, what you could do is have the one antenna pointing forward and then one pointing up, like in an L shape, and maybe that might work. Possibly. <laughs> but oh, then well. again, it depends. People, it depends what your antenna is doing up there, though. I've seen people do that, though. It works like that, doesn't it? Because you don't even have to have your antenna pointing linear, up. Linear, it does in, in a way. If you point it down, it's still the same. Is that right? Oh, it's a torus, yeah. It's completely pointless <laughs> pointing it down. Then it, it just matches the the planes. Yeah, so if you're flying and your drone's aerials... Like, <laughs> like that, a unicorn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like <laughs> that, you could have one pagoda up and one <laughs> at a point. Uh. So um, um does, does Men I don't I had a look on the site but I couldn't see does Menace have a uh like a cloverleaf style antenna and if if not are you planning on releasing one? Um we haven't got a cloverleaf one, no. We've got the got the pagoda the pagoda style one which we call the raptor. Raptor um, yeah. yeah, um no, I, I I tell you I I kind of I kind of love the um the control of printed circuit boards yeah and in, in the preciseness of them now you know if you went down the route of doing clover leaves and um you know making making wire loops and everything like that there there would be a lot of um testing and setting up in production of each and every one of them yeah um and you would probably have quite a high um rate of ones which wouldn't pass the tests 
which would have to come back through for retweaking and so on. So, I mean, the great thing with PCBs is the the accuracy of the copper going onto the PCB is much, much higher than um, a, sort of a, a wound or a, a wire formed antenna. Um, so, you know, our, our rejection rate is very small. Um, and that's kind of why I love the love the PCBs for repeatability. Yeah, I guess they're more durable as well, aren't they? I think, I, like, I use the Armway one, and they've got sort of like a um, a plastic part to them that sort of stop them from breaking and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess the Pagoda's much more durable in, in a crash as well, perhaps. Yeah, like, I've, like, I've broken a whole bunch of SKUs, and you only have to get one of the lobes just slightly off, and uh, and the antenna is, is going way out straight yeah. away. Yeah, I and, found that. You know, we've all been at the field sort of saying, I'll just bend this back and it'll be okay. But I, I don't know. I think I mine is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's not your daily driver, Jack. Oh, <laughs> boys. I mean, what really does it is the broken ground plane. It really does make that antenna so <laughs> flexible. You know, and... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that just... I'm you can just move it where you need to. I don't need so much. It's like an old car. It's like, you know, oh, if it's cold in the morning. Well, like, <laughs> oh, I bet this would love a good old docking. I mean, docking. <laughs> so we've got a question here. How long until we get an MMCX to Raptor? Bloods asks. Bloods ask. Okay. Bloods. Um... Oh. Hang on two seconds, guys. There's a there's that noise again. There is a um straw poll, and if enough people vote, Andy RC has got no choice but to take his top off. Oh, for God's sake, because it is passed <laughs> as a petition. Where is so that? I'm, I'm voting, to take it, it off. I, can't, I, I kind of feel like there's a me too moment coming up here yeah. somewhere. And guys, if you want to put your questions in a chat, I will copy them over. Sorry, carry on, Greg. Well, the, no vote, the vote has had four votes so far. Six. Oh, look, it's going up. 71% say take your top off. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just about to vote too. So Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Can't argue with democracy, Andy. I know. I'm I'm voting off. I'm feeling violated, honestly. Eighty percent eighty three percent off seventeen on. I'm quite I'm quite eight I'm quite worried about this. Get well, I, I'm starting to wonder why people are tuning in <laughs> Is it is it for what we're talking I'd about? I'd just like to point out know. we had sixty nine viewers when I said that. Now it's gone to seventy one. Oh my god. I am not a piece of meat. Can you imagine like standing in front of seventy people? And just taking your shirt off, like you got it. You got it. That, that's, what, that's what's happening, right? How yeah. I need, I need more friends to 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 vote this down. Can we can we uh, uh, have answer the uh, MMCX question? Yes, so, yeah. MMCX. Okay, cool. Um, I've been asked quite a few times for MMCX and previously to that UFL. Um, so basically, I've had a look at doing it with our current Raptor Pagoda offering. And I think it will probably be quite a bad idea because the the, the pagoda raptor is um, is quite a big um, sort of a, a circumference to the to the antenna itself with quite a lot of weight on there. So if we're going down to a thinner cable and everything, it's I think we're going to introduce problems elsewhere. So we I'm currently working on something um, which I hope to get the design work finished over the coming, uh, you know, couple of weeks or so. And it should be a smaller Omni aimed purely at MMCX. And if anyone still wants UFL with that as well. Yeah, because I, I that, that's become quite a thing, hasn't it? Like doing away with the SMA connector completely for weight mm. purpose on, on the copter. I noticed the, um, the, the Axie, you can get it with, actually those you can get, with UFL as well, which I think is a really bad idea because uh, UFL is just not strong enough to, to have no, a direct UFL connector. I've had I've had to glue down because at some point it's just come off and yeah. it rips out too easy. But MMCX I quite like. I think it's pretty pretty. And then easy then you've got there. you've got the crowd of people that say MMCX is is too hefty and heavy, so you can't <laughs> win really. But I prefer MMCX. 
So um, I'm well, I think if you, if you look at like UFL in MMCX and SMA, and you, you look at the data sheets for each of those connectors and the number of operations, you know, the disconnect and reconnect, yeah. the UFL is something like 10 operations. Wow. The SMA <laughs> is about 500 and MMCX, I think is somewhere between 50 and 100. I can't remember. Right oh, now. really? So, that, so that's more, yeah. Yeah, so uh, out of those three, if you're going for lightweight, then the MMCX is probably, you know, the happy medium. Uh, neither, all of those numbers are quite terrifying, actually, aren't they? They're very small amount for, you know, um, especially UFL, because I, you know, they, they come disconnected all the time when you're doing a build, don't they? Yeah, that's because you've unplugged them too many times already and they've just broken. Mm, yeah. what do you, why are you unplugging them? Usually they're just glued on, aren't the they? The UFLs just come out all the time. Every time I just sort of a, a leaf rushes past. Yeah. It's like it's gone. It's Especially off. when you're doing a build and like um for example, like if your VTX has come, like a lot of those little HLRC ones, you have to put the, the gooey bit on yourself, you know. So they come disconnected when you're trying to, you know, do your build and with your cable ties and stuff. They come mm. disconnected all the time, so I think that's why. So falling mm. with style says mating cycles. So, mating cycles. Yeah, I just oh. like to point out that Andy RC's complaining about mating cycles and <laughs> and waving and docking around. I, I wasn't sure if you were talking about the vote again when you started <laughs> oh, well, talking about uh, mating Richard Harwood cycles. said, "Andy, I just took all my clothes off to make you feel better." So someone is watching nude right now. Richard yeah. Oh yeah, that makes me feel way better. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be pleased. A lot more people voted for you to keep your top on. All this thing is missing now is like a donation thing, and then I'm I'm basically you know I've become like a, a cam boy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> a docking. Like a, you could be called the docking. This is the live stream. <laughs> become the live docking episode. <laughs> and, uh, that is uh, that's quite frightening. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I see there's a question there from is it Richard Warwick? He said yeah. is there an updated bandicoot in the works? Um no. <laughs> quick answer is no. Um because the bandicoot was always designed for sort of like the micro drones, the little whoops and things like that. So I think to redesign that into a much higher gain antenna, it probably won't achieve an awful lot for these sort of um micro drones. I might be wrong, um, but yeah, nothing's going to um, be developed on the Bandicoot as such. Somebody yeah. asked somebody asked me a question, right? Because I always use the the Bandicoot in conjunction with the the Omway antenna, and somebody mm -hmm. said, wouldn't it be better to use it in conjunction with a uh, sort of like a dipole antenna? What do you know the answer? Yeah, the Bandicoot's designed to work um, with a with a whip or dipole style antenna. Um, oh, you mean on the goggles, on the receiving yeah. end? Yeah, the receiving end. Oh, I get you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get asked that question quite a lot. What can I put on the goggles with the, with the Bandicoot? And oh. it really, it, it doesn't make an awful lot of difference. Um, you can stick a circular on there, a uh, circular omni, or you could put a uh, like a, the rubber duck. Because what, what you'll find is that the Bandicoot would do most of the work and the other antenna will just probably fill in the gaps, you know, for like yeah. if you do grow over your head or behind you and things like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I did do a test with just a single antenna flying Omni to Omni versus like a skew to Omni. And because I thought, oh, yeah, Omni Omni is going to be good. And I completely forgot about the fact that, of course, as soon as you turn, that the, the antenna completely depolarizes and you've like got such a db loss coming in it was amazing so at any distance i think i went to about 300 meters and turned around and the the little um rubber duck is like static for about 10 <laughs> seconds during this turn whereas yes, the, uh, yeah. the skew just like a little flicker and it was back again and that's because it's like it's a it it's not a gain is it it's a loss but it's a constant loss all the way around so it doesn't matter where your orientation of the uh, the other antenna is Yes, yeah, that's right. Because um, yeah, if you you get your cross polarization and you lose a lot of gain, or you do in theory. Um, so if you take um, yeah two linear antennas and you turn one of them at ninety degrees, the actual area where they're cross-secting is very small. So you, you do lose a lot of your signal. 
Um, what you'll find though, is if you use a bandicoot with uh, a linear antenna um, on your drone, the bandicoot is way more forgiving than two dipoles. So you would, you would um, not experience that dropout. And we've done a lot of testing here and um, you can do flips, inverts and all sorts with the, with the drone and you don't lose the signal. Sweet. Says here, Andy RC, Andy RC should take his top off and wear two Pico patches. Oh my god! Go on, do it. No, uh, that image would haunt me. Says Yodel. Yeah, and me. <laughs> Enoch FBV says a question. What about a real, real long range antenna? Are Are you going to make one of those like a proper, like a pepper box type cannon, cannon type thing? Have you thought of anything? Yeah, do anything I've, like that? I've got I've got some designs I'm working on. When can um, I have my one sent to me? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as it's ready. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, no, um, there will, we, yes, long range. Everyone's talking about long range. Everyone wants to fly further. They want to fly kilometers or, you know, that type of thing. Um, so, yes, we will be addressing it. And, yes, uh, we, we are working on designs and should have something in the foreseeable future. Cool. So there's stuff in the works. So you're always working. I still think it's interesting when people talk about long range in the context of quads because it's all relative, isn't it? It's like long range in a quad. It's like, my goodness, you went to one kilometer. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, playing I, with I can fly line. 10 minutes of mine, so I can go ten mi five out and five back. Well, you, probably you can fly 10 minutes if you fly, you know, like, 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 like this, Jack, very like concentrated, Jack. being yeah, really like gentle. Yeah, like drives, like Miss Daisy. Um, yeah. Four four minutes out, four back. That'll get you some distance. Beyond what? Beyond a couple of kilometres. I should think maybe so. th three with the right the right sort of quad. Somebody said to me, "Why why don't we see uh why don't we see dual antennas on VTXs?" Uh, and I think their idea was um to sort of have a maybe an antenna above above the quad, so on top, and an antenna below the quad. But I, I guess I, I mean the the answer I gave is that like I, I think their idea is why why don't we have diversity on a copter and of course you can't have it on the copter. I think what maybe you could have, I think you would have to have maybe two VTXs, one transmitting, uh, and, and, and do you know what I mean? So you had like two twenty five well, milliwatts. That would be fifty milliwatts. But Andy. would it would it though if they're do you know what I mean? They would just be uh, somebody set this up. I don't know if this was this was Alex again. Did this as a system on a plane where he used two VTXs and two receivers or or something. And the idea was it was going to be it looked for the the best signal or or something like left hand and right hand polarized on different things, and it used some sort of diversity system. It was some weird and wacky setup, which was basically to, to try and alleviate the problem at range about anything on the. It, it was on a wing or something about something blocking the signal at certain distance. Well, yeah, if, if you've got your antenna on the top of a quadcopter, for example, and you go up high, your copter is blocking the signal completely. So I think I think their idea was is to have another antenna at the bottom, and then when that happens, that one becomes in use somehow. But um, it's that somehow part that's uh, quite tricky. <laughs> Somebody did something, and I think it was based more on about left hand and right hand polarization yeah. rather than two different. It might have been on two different channels. I can't remember it now. It's going to bug me, and I'm going to have to try and look that up. Um, I think I, I, I do remember something vaguely about this, where it was two VTXs on two um, different channels, and one was on left and one was on right, and then they modified a diversity receiver to receive the two different frequencies, but the diversity would pick the clearest one, um, from what I remember. Yeah, ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that, uh, that makes sense. We could yeah. send send one to each eye. Someone said in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Just close your eye. It depends which one's best. <laughs> yeah. I saw someone who fitted a servo on their antenna, and it, it it flicked it up to underneath, like on a switch, like on a servo. So when they went above themselves, it was like a manual switch of the. <laughs> you could go the whole hog, and you could have tracking on the ground and the reverse tracking on your model as well. So well. Both you know, antennas would point towards each other at all time. I hate to talk about the Doc King again. 
<laughs> You're not helping. <laughs> but but what this does is it's it it um if you can buy like an infinite number of these and link them together via an Ethernet cable. And um, the idea is that you you sort of like say if you're in a race, you can dot them around the track, um, and it'll it'll be multiversity. I think they they say. And uh, the thing is that the thing is though, like you'd need that for every pilot because it's multiversity for just the one channel that it's on. So I don't know whether that's going to take off, but um, that's something that this system offers. I, I suppose they could be suggesting that you could, um, let's say you wanted to fly around uh, uh, tunnels that go under the ground. Yeah. Place one yeah. of those every so often. Yeah. Uh, I, but I, I love your quote about having an infinite amount of them. It's like, if you have an infinite amount of them, you, it will type the works of Shakespeare. It's kind of like that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Like the top limit. That's interesting though. Yeah, I'm tempted to go and like sort of climb a load of trees and just put them in permanently with just like a lipo, <laughs> just, just lipo put that all dangles all at the around bottom of the park tree. where you fly yeah. on the two bin, and yeah. just like then every time you fly, you don't have to even think about it. XT60 that yeah just dangles at the bottom of the tree. Plug it in. They're okay. All sorry, I've got another question in the chat. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. I didn't mean to, Andy. You were in full swing then. <laughs> I'm talking garbage, Tony. So it, it's fine. I uh, not... seaweed, in the, seaweed in the chat says, does it cause much loss running a 45 de de degree connector with my patch? No. There you go. That's a positive no from Greg at Menace. Oh, yeah. if, you, if you want to find out more, hop onto the Menace website, go to the page which says tips. And on it says what? Tips. T I P S. Okay. Tips. Thank you. And I, there's a bit there where I've done a little bit of testing. Um, with various different connectors and from what I remember the 45 was hardly anything the 90 degree was hardly anything but some of the extensions that I tested um, some were good some were not so good hmm that's that's the worry in Depends doing what the coaxial made out of is that right whether it's lost yeah. or not well, the one I think I was them was RG316, which is only good to about three gigahertz. And it was being sold as a good for 5.8, but it wasn't. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I've got two kind of random things, and then we'll ask droning out droning on's question. Um one mm -hmm. is Andy RC. Uh, Dan Upton's currently working on a dog poo bin emoji. For my oh. Twitch. Oh, awesome. Yeah, which I thought was quite funny. And um, I was going to go back to Curry Kitten's um, skew planer and clover leaf uh, argument. Surely it was back in the day, the clover leaf was the three lobed antenna, and then the skew planer was the receiving one for the four. The, the way I recall it, and I might be wrong, but I think the the skew planer was the old one with the four load. Yeah, and, and that would stay on your receiver, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. what I think. If, if you were running them, you would always run the, 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 the more lobes on the receiver. So it got into a habit for a while that people would have a skew on the receiver and a cloverleaf on the, the model. But then it's like, well, just run skew both ends because that's, that's better. That's what we did. Yeah, was, wasn't it because, like, you know, you're making it yourself... Well, when people were making it themselves, it was slightly harder to make them decently, which before people started making them in in any sort of bulk quantity. So the the Omway antenna that I run is listed as the Omway cloverleaf. Oh, I'm look at <laughs> Have a look. <laughs> Type in Google Omway cloverleaf. And all no, I'm not typing that in. I'm I'm looking for Omway skew planer. Screw on way, they don't know what they're talking about. Let me find let me find what I'm looking Yeah, for. like as far as uh, RC model reviews are, they can't be trusted. To even I, make I, an I'm, antenna. Not too, I'm not too bothered on the name, really. It's you know plus you can have a four leaf clover, surely. Lucky. They're, yeah. just, they're just legends. <laughs> Greg, most of your stuff's receiving antennas. Are you doing a transmitter antenna anytime soon? Yeah, well, we were just talking earlier about the MMCX. So, yeah. yeah Is there something... anything else coming with that? What, transmitting-wise? Mm, yeah. 
Um, well, yeah, the, this MMCX is going to be um, something a little bit different without going into too much detail. But yeah, it should be a good little omni antenna to add okay. to the menace range. Yeah. You look really inter intellectual, your glasses, Greg. You should wear them more. It's only so I can see things. <laughs> right. To, to slightly interrupt, if you all click on the link that I've put in the um, chat, you will see the 1950s skew planar antenna. I kind of oh, feel like I kind of feel like Wayne's turned into one of those people in the comment section on a YouTube video where it doesn't matter, but I have and to it be right. Matter, but it's eating away at me now, and every time someone says slightly the, you know, if you just listen to a bunch of people talk about things that you know you know about and they don't, and then they keep saying it wrong every moment, and you start every time they say it, you say the right word and then it gets louder and eventually you have to go over there and start interrupting them and, and shake them and maybe it's just me. I kind of feel like this is a conversation to your therapist right now rather than people. <laughs> you know, you know, you, I kind of, it kind of like, feels like you're explaining something to me that you need to get off your chest. Certain yeah. things eat away at me and they must be put right. We, we, we can't <laughs> let people get it wrong. People cannot be wrong on the internet because that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put them yes. right one one person at a time i think i think as well though you know i i get that as well because um quite often I, i've made a video and you know when you're just talking you'll just say something and you can't unsay it but you know it's wrong in your video i absolutely hate that and you've probably had that before as well and you're like you can't cut it because it just wouldn't make sense if you if you cut it and stuff so it's i think it's fun in fact joshua bardwell taught me this he said that you should make a mistake in every video on purpose because then people will go crazy correcting you but it will give you the views of the exposure so we should have 10 billion subscribers <laughs> <laughs> that is true tony that is i can't true. even spell the thing that <laughs> exactly. This is all like me and Jack talk off air and go, let's spell it wrong to get the viewers. <laughs> it just <laughs> don't work. That's, that's actually, mm. Behind the scenes, we have these special meetings where we're very cerebral and we talk about how how we're going to act stupid all the way through, like we don't know what we're talking about. But it's all right. an act, really. It we know everything. It, 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 like, yeah, totally me, right. You know, Tony's like, oh. Do you reckon I would get higher gain if I like made a, a, a like, you know, coaxial reflector shield or something? And I'm like, no, Tony, you can't let them know that you know what that is. <laughs> 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 no. That is. Oh, um, last week we talked a little bit about the X light, and someone said it if I was going to be getting one, and I wasn't sure, but I am going to be sent the X light, so. I can announce that on on here and you know i'm not i'm i know that i'm not a big fan of the small transmitters but i've had a lot of requests and somebody said oh, i'll send you one so i'm gonna be checking that out cool. what are you doing jack <laughs> got no idea mate Powdering it up. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway um just before i i thought about doing some new segments to the show and I thought of this new segment. It's called Andy oh, RC. No. You're northern, <laughs> aren't you? And it's where I ask you a northern slang word, and you've got to try and explain what it is. Go on, man. Oh, Andy, like what is a tea cake? A tea cake? It's just a, Without it's just... Googling. <laughs> a tea cake is just a muffin, isn't it? I don't know. Is that I don't know, or or, or is it? Why, why would it be to me? Why would it be called a muffin? Why would um, it have two names? I have no idea. I think first of all we should discuss what is tea, a tea. Is it a drink or is it a meal? No, that's the next week. Because uh, well, that's next week. Because only here, one a, one a week. Up here, tea time is you know it's time for food. You know, yeah, but the up really. there, up there, a t-shirt is a bloody jacket down here, isn't it? I thought you were going to ask me what docking was. That's that's my more sort of a uh, thing that I can. Right, answer. and that is the end of the show. Thank <laughs> you everyone for tuning in. Thank you. You've been listening to Let's Drone Out. You've been joined by Andy RC, the Doc King. Good night, everybody. Do not uh, Google that or do. Our it. guest, Menis Darcy. 
Thank you very much. Good night. The uh, the doc, uh, Tony. Bonjour. And the doc, E, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that. Uh, curry kitten. Remember, correct it. It's not cloverleaf. It's a skew planer. <laughs> I'm going to just call it a go relief, just wind you up now. <laughs> and I've been bright until I fly. Big massive shout out to the people that support us on Patreon. Our latest donator is Falling With Style, I believe. Green Patches, Mikey Dread, Zero FPV. Uh, Gav's just, uh, Gav says it's a urinal cake. Sorry. Ah. Oh, me. Um, Steve Gadlin, uh, yeah, loads of you guys. If you can, please just spare a dollar or two. It helps keep the show afloat and makes Frank a lot less stressed out because he's like, if there's a problem, he can he can actually do something about it. Uh, thank you and good night, Richard Warwick. <laughs> <laughs>